And it's funny, all the different things that, that, that can preoccupy the mind in place of giving hugs. <laughs> you know, doing senseless things, Jesus says, to make, to make uh, what he, he later calls in Lesson 76, uh, um, stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs. Oh. And then to use this to buy more senseless things that you don't even need. You know, it's just he's poking fun at the economic systems. We were talking about Liz a while ago and all the stock market crashes and all the trillions of dollars of accumulated wealth that were seemingly built up. But, you know, you have to understand from the perspective of the Holy Spirit, it's, this is, that's not a reality. Anybody ever see the movie Forrest Gump? Yep. Yeah. And there's a part of that movie, you know, where he's just sitting on, at a bus stop and the camera is following a feather. They got a camera following a feather in the wind. And it's just like floating around and you, the camera angles are just following, following this feather floating in the wind, floating in the wind floating in the wind, and then it kind of comes down and rests gently behind Forrest's uh, legs. And, uh, did anybody ever see the movie that won all the Academy Awards years ago, American Beauty? Yeah. Remember that paper, that plastic bag? that just was blowing in the wind, circling round and around, how beautiful that was, and the contrast of all the images. So we were talking about a butterfly to look out and watch the butterfly wafting up, floating, floating around, free. You know, those are symbols that, that can be very strong when you think about your life. How will you use your life? You know, do you want to be like the worker bee and work, 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 or do you want to be more like the butterfly that just floats very lightly and is carried? In the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, your problem isn't that you ask for too much out of life. You ask for far too little. It's like, interesting about human uh, expectations. It's that underneath these little tiny prayers, and underneath these little expectations, there's this belief in unworthiness. That we really don't believe that we're worthy of love. And we play out that belief in relationships, we play it out in terms of economics, we, we play it out in many aspects of our life. And the teaching is, is you're worth it. I mentioned my friend Captain Les from Qantas again, <laughs> who uh, was single-mindedly responsible for the downfall of the economic system. Uh, he. I was going to be in Sydney and he's finally got these 24 days from the Holy Spirit that he wants to spend with me. So, we're doing a couple gatherings and one day is going to be for private sessions, so to speak, one-on-ones or whatever, an hour apiece. And his wife is organizing it, so she gets the paper out and she draws all the lines and she's all getting ready and everything. And Les says to Tina, his wife, Okay, I want to book the whole day with David. Just write my name straight down the page. She's like, no, you're not going to book the whole day. So, he kept at it, kept at it. Finally, there was three little blocks. He finally got down to three blocks, three hours. And as the t days, the gatherings, the days went on, getting closer to that day, uh, other people wanted to do one-on-one, -on -one, so Tina was saying, now, you can give up <laughs> your slot. <laughs> and he ended up giving up all the slots. <laughs> saying, it's going to come back to me. Ah, oh, you just wait and see. It's all going to come back. <laughs> so then when we went to the airport, he came with us to the airport to travel with us down to Tilba. In a matter of maybe 45 minutes, he asked all of his deepest questions and everything, and uh, he received the answers in 45 minutes to a whole day's worth <laughs> uh, that he had given away so generously. And, and as soon as we got to the parking place, you know, those little metal arms that, that come down, that, that close and let you go in. It came down and 
in big letters that said, You deserve it! Exclamation <laughs> point. And Helena was in the back seat, she said, Look, you deserve it! <laughs> and he just squealed with delight, like a little boy that had just got what he wanted. And so that's the way it can be, in the sense that, that we have to lift up our asking from these small little things that we are asking for, and really lift it up higher and higher to, we deserve consistent peace, we deserve consistent happiness, we deserve joy, gleefulness, like a child's sense of gleefulness, we deserve that. And it's only the ego that would say there are limits, there are limits to happiness. Everything in this world seems to be limits. People have really happy feelings and then they get this strange thing like, uh-oh, Maybe I'm too happy. Like, I better watch it, it's too happy. It's, it's crazy, it's just these ideas. And in the end, what we have to do is really let go of those feelings. I have a friend, Lisa, I call her, she's the female Les. We have one of, we have a Les over in the United States too, but her name is Lisa. <laughs> Leslie here, Lisa there. Um, and she, she'll go into deep meditations where she just soars and soars and soars higher and higher and then she hits a point, it's like a glass ceiling of fear where it's just like, uh oh, I'm losing it. So we have to start to let go of that losing it feeling. What are we losing? What can we lose? How high is too high? My friend Kirsten, um, she went with me down to South America and we were at, a, at a, like a coffee amusement park, is the best way to describe it. It was a Juan Valdez amusement park uh, down in the middle of Colombia. And she had one of those giddy, joyful days where she was just dancing around like a little girl and her mind went so mushy, she was so mushy in love that she couldn't walk uh, straight. So I had to hold her hand, you know, like a little little boy or little girl, I had to hold her hand all day long because she was just so giddy, looked like, you know, almost like somebody's on a, a drug trip, a, a super high <coughs> drug trip or something. She, with no drugs involved, no coffee even, nothing. Uh, she was just going along and all day I had her hand and we would go in to get a drink and she would like look at the menu, at this, of all the different coffees and flavors and everything. She couldn't make out any words. She was like, oh, just couldn't. But, but it was so nice, it was a nice symbol that she was having one of those mystical days and that my hand was there for her the whole day. So she could just simply ride with it. You know, there was no sense of, of hiding or, or pulling back from it. And that's, isn't it beautiful that even when you go into this love and this joy, that the symbols that you seem to need that would be helpful will be there for you to say, it's okay, you're okay. Don't worry about being normal. Don't worry about being average or fitting in with the crowd or whatever. Just let yourself soar. How beautiful. God loves us that much. Even those symbols are there for us. Okay. Wow, where do we go? <laughs> Does anybody have any topics or anything they want to bring up or talk about? Or more songs? More songs. More songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having so much fun with them. Have you gone there as I love you? Uh, yes, we do. There's only love. There's only love. A request from the audience of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs>